Good morning. I'm Pastor Doug Tomhave. Serve here at St. Paul's and Lake Mills. It's good to be with you this morning. Hope you had a good night's sleep or wherever I'm meeting you in the course of your day. Uh, it is good to be in God's word with you. And we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've been spending some time this week. Now we're in the middle of the week on Psalm 139, talking about the attributes of God. And the first attribute of God that we learn is that he is omniscient. He knows everything. The second attribute of God we learned is that he's omnipresent. He is everywhere. And as Christian children with the Heavenly Father, the relationship we have in Jesus, these are really comforting things. But we're going to learn something even more intimate about our being, who we are, how we're made up, our, our bodies uh, that we were created. We're going to learn about God's power. He's almighty. This is one of his attributes, too, that he has all power. And we'll see it especially in his creating. And I'm going to start with verse 15 excuse me, verse 13. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. This is just amazing truths that we hear from scripture. Lately, we've been having the discussion because of an appointee to the Supreme Court, somehow or other, the, the discussion of abortion and Roe v. Wade and whether or not that will continue in the courts. And it appears, and this isn't unique to the world or to just our society, that mankind devalues life in its beginning, thinking we're just a mass of cells that just happens and that it's through whatever the situation, a man and woman, whether it was convenient or un inconvenient, it's a mass of cells that can just be taken out and disposed of like there was no other plan for this being or whatever it is until it is born. And the discussion goes on. This portion of scripture doesn't speak to abortion, but what it does do to speak to is, is the fact that every human being is planned by God. Every human being, and let's talk even more specifically about you, is knit together by God himself, that he's the one that puts the spark of life. He's the one that, that from, from the creation has already planned a place for you. And, and David speaks in language that maybe was just the way that he could understand these things. He didn't have ultrasounds that you could go and look at the actual baby growing and map out each month in the womb that he said you were knit together in your mother's womb, that God brought that spark of life and the zygote that developed into something that could be born and then eventually with umbilical cord cut, it could breathe and talk and walk and become you. Our bodies are amazing. The fact that we have life is because of God's creating power. And you were part of a plan that, that before there was, you were a sparkle in your mom and dad's eyes, before grandma and grandpa ever had your parents, God already knew you. And David alludes to the fact that God was already forming you and then putting you where you needed to be. Your life is, is planned by him. And our bodies are amazing. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Mankind still is discovering truths about how these bodies work and how we can care for them best. And just think about this. I mean, this is just a, a simple thing. I'm going to pinch my finger and I, my brain knows that my right hand, the thumb and the pointer, is pinching my left hand pointer finger just below uh, the knuckle. And, and I say, ow, and I know exactly what my body is doing without even looking at it. Uh, this body is so intricately put together and wound up by God and is just so fickle too. It could just be one car crash and this life comes to an end, but God is knit together and sustains and holds this life and he has a plan for it. And more than this body that he's knit together and the life that he gives you in this life, he has a plan for you, body and soul forever in heaven. God's going to use that almighty power to make sure nothing gets in the way of his plan to preserve you and then to resurrect you and now introduce you to the life that God has planned for you better than pre-fall, where there is no sin or sorrow and sadness, no limitations to this body at all. So may we, through these words, learn that you are part of God's plan, that God is intimately involved in the creation of you and the preserving of you and me. 
And if you want to see the heartbeat behind it, just look at what Jesus was willing to do to restore us body and soul, to, to live and die in our place. And may we go with this, this comfort of God's knowledge, his presence, and his power as we live this life for him, we pray. Dearest God, we learn today just the value of life, that you are a God who creates it. And you are the God who knit us together in our mother's womb and placed us where we needed to be and have a plan for our entire life. This knowledge for us is just amazing. We stand back in awe of who you are. And we thank you, God, for revealing yourself to us. Preserve us in life to life eternal. Amen. So go into your day with the almighty God and his power behind you and before you and over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.